This is Game Chat with one episode 125. Valve leaks monster numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna fix that. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 125 of Game Chat with Warner. We got a great show lined up for you. Sorry about the intermittent episodes. Again, some things came up. The holiday came around, and after E3, you know, there was just not a lot of time for me to do the shows, and uh, I was bouncing back and forth between doing videos and other things, and um, I think one week, there was just one week where I just couldn't find any news, and I didn't tell you all about that, and that was actually a bad thing on my part. So this time, I'll... Uh, I'll actually do a show today, even though I did find a, a few gems out there. There, there's not a some some there's not a huge amount of, I guess you want to call big stories because we came off of E3 and it was kind of like a lull period because all the news outlets and all the gaming companies were pretty much recovering from E3, and uh, now some time has passed. I think the news is starting to kick up again. Uh, some juicy topics, not necessarily super controversial things or, you know, clickbaity things, but actual real stories. So enjoy the show, guys. Here's Game Chat with Borna coming at you right now. And for our first story, we're going to talk about Warframe. Warframe is a game that I've played for many years. It's probably my top stream game next to Elite Dangerous on my Twitch stream at twitch.tv slash Buona. You may have seen some videos over on my YouTube channel as well about Warframe. And I got to tell you, it's it's a game that changed the way I looked at, at free-to-play games for quite a while. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up Warframe is because uh, they had their annual conference called TennoCon. Tenno is a name of a, of a character or a series of characters within Warframe. I don't want to throw too many spoilers out there. Um, but... Uh, TennoCon is the conference that they have every year uh, in the summer up in London, Ontario, Canada. And it's their platform for announcing their next expansions, new features. There's panels with art, with sound teams, and with the developers of Digital Extremes. There's partners. I'm a Warframe partner, so some of my fellow Warframe partners were up there uh, up in London, Ontario. I couldn't make it this year, but hopefully I'll be able to make it next year. Uh, to hold panels and, and to sign autographs and give away merchandise and all kinds of cool stuff. Meet with developers, meet with other people, form partnerships. It's one of the typical conferences. Now, last TennoCon, uh, Warframe announced a open world initiative called Planes of Eidolon. Big, giant open area. And this was a, you know, if you don't know what Warframe is, it's, it's a third person over the shoulder action RPG shooter. With a with a very elaborate parkour movement system, so it's very fast and you know very. It's, 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 I don't know. It's, it's unique from all the other games out there, and uh, they announced this big open world, which was different from the typical Diablo esque tile based closed quarters uh, maps that were there before. This is this big open area with just wide open planes that you can jump around, move, and do quests and do bounties, as they're called, and fight these giant things called Eidolons. It was a big, big reveal. So this year they had to kind of top that. And we were trying to, you know, trying to speculate as users what they were going to talk about. So on Saturday, on this past Saturday, they took the stage. And the first announcement <laughs> was kind of a surprise to me because I, I didn't I didn't see it coming. They're bringing Warframe to the Nintendo Switch. That's right. Nintendo's console slash mobile I guess you can call it mobile gaming device, which can change into a console, is now going to be a platform for Warframe. And that kind of changes it from my perspective because actually Warframe would be a game that I would play on the Switch. I don't actually have a Switch because all the games on there I would probably play. And after I'm done with the game, I would I would never play the Switch again. That's what I've done with my Wii and my Wii U's. I play the game and then I just haven't touched the console again. So that was big news. Um, and... <laughs> I thought that was going to be the climax, but it was like, no, that, that was that was the beginning. They then went and they talked about, you know, some of the highlights of the of the conference and their panels and, you know, showed some of the concept art for some of the Warframes that are coming up, which are the classes, if you want to know what they are. Um, and then they got to the big thing. And this is where I want to focus a little bit more. The next expansion 
is going to be an expansion called Fortuna, which is another open world effort, but on a different planet. Planes of Eidolons was on Earth. This one is going to be on Venus. And they opened with this Chain Gang song. You know, it's, uh, and I really didn't expect it. And I, I was listening as, as they were going through it, and I was like, what is this? And they, they just kept singing, you know, do, 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 do. And it was like this nice little tune that was going with it, and it started to get catchier and catchier. And then they had this climactic chorus that, and they were singing, We All Lift Together because it was a bunch of workers singing a song and it brought it gave me chills and i was like wow what is this and the the, the backstory is that it's going to be centered around a bunch of indenture servants or slaves of a villain called nef Anyo. and you're going to be helping them they're they're running an underground movement uh called i think solaris and you're going to be helping them with missions and stuff and the song is still trending to this day in the Warframe community, people are talking about how good this song is. And I, it, it just never really dawned on me that I would be leaving TennoCon from watching TennoCon with a song. And because that's, that's never happened. Um, and now that's all everybody's talking about is that song. But anyway, going past the song, which is really hard to do, by the way, uh, the actual Venus content is going to be great. It's going to be much bigger than Planes of Eidolon. There's a new movement system of hoverboards, which looks completely awesome. Uh, there's some quality of life changes. It's going to be different types of mobs, different types of things. And, you know, it was really it was a really good improvement over everything. And, you know, it got applause for me. I was like, that looks really good. I'm very proud of you, Digital Extremes. And they did a Steve Jobs on me. They're like, oh, we have this this one more thing. I'm like, oh, and suddenly this ship flies out of the sky and Rebecca, Danielle, and Megan, which are three of the community managers, they were demoing it, and they all, all three of them jumped on the ship, and they flew out into outer space seamlessly and began to attack a mothership or a carrier using multi-crew. Megan and Danielle were manning the guns while Rebecca was flying the ship and had different stations. I couldn't believe my eyes. I literally couldn't believe my eyes. This was, this is kind of what Elite Dangerous is trying to do. This is what Star Citizen wants to do, and it's like what it's like a combination of FTL, Elite Dangerous, Star Citizen, and Warframe, and they put it in Warframe. I, I, I couldn't believe my eyes that so much was happening in this free to play game, free to play. So this was called uh, uh, Gunjack. You guys are gonna kick me. It's something. Yes, Nightjack, Nighthawk, Nightjack, Gunjack, something. <laughs> Let me get the name for you. Hold on. Okay, it's actually called Railjack. I apologize. I had to go and actually go to the, the media and the article and actually see what it's called. It's called Railjack. So they showed that off and it involved boarding crews as well. So the enemy can board your ships and you can board theirs in different phases of the mission. And um, that, that got an immense applause from people from the event. It was so good. So good. And then they ended the, 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 the 10 live event with, um, a teaser for the next cinematic quest called the new war. So I'm not going to talk, I'm not gonna say anything about that because that'll be spoilerish if you haven't done any of the quests. So all in all, it was a very, very successful event for 10 I'm very proud of digital extremes. It just goes to show that just because a game is free to play, doesn't mean the quality has to be low. The song, Fortuna, um, the different space stuff that you can do. And, and it just really expanded the game that was already massive to begin with. And the game has been trending well on Twitch as well because a lot of big broadcasters are beginning to, begin, beginning to become addicted to Warframe now. And a lot of smaller broadcasters are starting to try Warframe again because it's one of those games that's really kind of hard to to master and uh, it can be a little bit intimidating at first but after seeing these things at TennoCon, i think a lot of people are willing to take that step to learn warframe check it out guys i'll put a link to some of the videos of the other reveals in the show description so you can watch and listen to that song <laughs> we all live together it is quite 
quite amazing. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Overwatch and their recent efforts for raising money for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, a few weeks ago, actually, it's been over a month now, uh, they had a campaign where they were selling a pink Mercy skin, which was very high quality, by the way. Uh, to benefit the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Uh, Blizzard has announced that that effort has raised 12.7 million U.S. dollars. This is from the article from their page. Thanks to the overwhelming generosity of the Overwatch community during the Pink Mercy charity campaign, we've raised more than 12.7 million U.S. dollars to support the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. This is the largest donation by a corporate partner within one year of the Breast Cancer Research Foundation's 25 year history. And it's all because of you. So this is a, actually a very, 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 very uh, successful effort by Blizzard. In addition to picking up the charity scan, players showed their support for the cause by purchasing thousands of limited edition Peak Mercy t-shirts available for men and women designed by community artist Vicky Sai. Um, so charity stream viewers rejoice. In addition to the 12.7 million raised through the sales of the skin and t-shirt, you separately raised $130,000 in donation in donations by watching 14 different Overwatch stars stream on Twitch. So during the event, not only were they selling the pink skins, they had a bunch of streamers uh, stream on Twitch and were raising money for the effort. And that raised an additional $130,000 in addition to the skins and shirts. So well done, Blizzard. I, some of these efforts are getting ridiculous. Like right now, Guardian Con is going on. They're 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 uh, their efforts for St. Jude, and they've they're about to hit two million. They just surpassed one point eight million, and now I think they've been going about two weeks now, and just streamers just streaming for that two million. And I remember it was a huge deal uh, when when people were raising like a hundred thousand dollars or even fifty thousand dollars for these video game charity streams. And now we're in the millions effortlessly. So I wonder how that's going to shift the public's perspective on video games, if at all. Check it out, guys, over on playoverwatch.com. They got the details. Blizzard raised $12.7 million for Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Next year, maybe even be even more. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Monster Hunter and uh, Monster Hunter World, I should say, which was a smashing success on the consoles when it released last year. And, uh, you know, we were told that the PC version will be coming soon, but we didn't know when exactly that was going to happen. And we have just received via news that it is going to be released on August 9th, 2018 on the PC platform. And uh, apparently this version is going to be improved graphics wise. I think we can kind of guess that Monster Hunter on PC will have substantial graphical options that the consoles didn't have. And obviously there will be a keyboard and mouse input configuration and i think that second part is probably going to be my area of interest when i monitor this story because uh, i think keyboard and mouse users want this game to be good with keyboard and mouse but i suspect a lot of players are going to start especially if they're familiar with monster hunter they're just going to start with a controller because that's how the game's been played to them for so long i for one hope that they can nail down a really really solid uh, keyboard and mouse configuration, much like Dauntless on PC, which I think probably, I don't know if anybody can do it even better than Dauntless did on PC because Dauntless is a Monster Hunter like game on PC that's been free to play and it's been out for a while. And uh, it has a keyboard and mouse configuration, which I think is much better than controller. And, you know, Monster Hunter, I played it on PS4 for a good two months and, um, uh, I, I didn't particularly like the controls. I didn't like the, the controller controls on it. Uh, you know, precise aiming, because I was playing with a bow. So precise aiming and stuff like that was kind of frustrating sometimes, especially if the, the monster was moving around a lot. So yeah, uh, this is uh, this article is over on PC Gamer, but it was announced by the developers. Uh, originally down for a fall autumn PC release, which Google informs me start September 23rd. The series desktop introduction comes earlier than planned. This is the first time we've taken a mainline Monster Hunter game to PC. Producer Ryozo Sujimoto tells us in a written Q&A. So we wanted to take the time to get it right and do the proper research and preparation. So uh, here's the official word from them. 
Uh, in Monster Hunter World, follow the journey of... Blah, blah, blah. Actually, I'm not going to read all that. But um, they claim that it will have parody. It will have parody with the console version uh, at launch. So that the content that the console versions have right now, we could expect to have on PC. Uh, and they said that it could improve with future, free, future, uh, free future updates. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any plans for mod support. I know a lot of people want to know about mod support when you mention PC, but there's no plans at launch for that. And it should run on fairly old graphic cards uh, with the system requirements. So let me just read to you what the system requirements are for that real quick. Again, it's going to be August 9th. It's going to be really, really, really soon. Um, so the OS, Windows 7 is going to be the minimum OS. All the way up to Windows 10. Intel Core i7-3770 or Intel Core i3-8350 or AMD Ryzen 5 5500X. This is the first time that I've seen my exact processor listed for anything. So this is the recommended configuration. So that's the exact processor that I have on my computer, a 3770. Uh, memory, they recommend eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, graphics card for recommended is a 1060 with three gigabytes of VRAM or Radeon RX 570X with four gigabytes. DirectX 11, 20 gigabytes of space, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the minimum configuration is going to be Windows 7, of course. Uh, Intel Core i5 4460, or AMD FX 6300 or above, and eight gigabytes of RAM. A, a GTX 760 video card, or an AMD R7 260X, with two gigabytes of VRAM and above for graphics card minimum configuration. DirectX version 11, et cetera, et cetera, 20 gigabytes of storage. So this is coming in very, you know, it's going to be less than a month from now um, that we'll be talking about Monster Hunter World on PC. Exciting times, exciting times. So let's uh, basically, let's talk about the opinionated part of this. I personally didn't like Monster Hunter World on console. Um, I thought there was too much fluff and I actually wanted more hunting and nothing but hunting. And... I got gathering and I got all these little missions and side quests and stuff that were basically just filler. And I, I got frustrated because it was, I, I got bored because I wanted to hunt monsters. And and they were like, nah, you need to do this to get through this and to get to the good stuff. Because the only reason why I was doing that stuff so I can get through the story so I can get to the good hunts. And um, I just got I got I lost patience and I, I rarely do that. And so I went to Dauntless on PC and that game was all about the hunts. Every single thing requires a hunt, you know? So it's like, it was like the opposite of what I wanted. So if I, and people look at me weird when I say this, I'm like, I had more fun with Dauntless on PC than I had with Monster Hunter World. And I really am, not, I don't have any plans to even buy Monster Hunter World on PC. That may be shocking to some of you. I have no plans to do it. I have it on PS4. I don't want to play it on that platform, so I don't even know what would convince me to play it on the PC. So unless they do something drastic, and from what I read from this article, there's nothing drastic enough for me to change my mind. Um, I'm probably just going to stick with Dauntless on PC, and if I ever want to go back to Monster Hunter World, I have it on PS4. So there's no sense in me for buying the game twice if I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So check this story out, guys, over on PCGamer.com. They got the details. Monster Hunter World PC announced August 9th. 2018 and the minimum system requirements have been revealed and for our final story we're going to talk about valve and an actual leak in the valve ha <laughs> ha it's probably steam coming out <laughs> all right enough of that joke i just had to get out of my system uh valve has had a leak on their steam gameplay accounts via an api glitch that happened recently and they've already plugged the hole but the data has already been revealed this article is over on uh, rstechnica.com and uh the caveat to this is that this data only shows games that have uh, Steam achievements. So that's like about 13,000 of the 23,000 games on Steam. So it's a big chunk of them. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a sizable data amount. Um, but the numbers that you will see on this data, this stuff is kind of surprising. I saw a few games in here that I didn't think it had that many players or downloads, but they do. And as you can probably guess, free to play is definitely strong. Um, at the top of their list of the CSV file, Team Fortress 2 hails in. Excuse me. Team Fortress 2 hails in at 50 million players. 50 million, 191,000, 
347 players. Now, it's a free-to-play game, so you can bet that there's going to be a lot of duplicates and, you know, people creating alt accounts and farming accounts or whatever. Um, but still, 50 million players is a lot. The next up is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Are you, I mean, are you surprised? I'm not. These are, these are games that are in the top 10 of Steam all the time. 46 million players for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. The next one... You shouldn't be surprised. Is is Player Unknown's Undergrounds, uh, Battlegrounds? I'm sorry, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Thirty six million players, ridiculous. Now number four on the list, I have forgot existed. It's called Unturned. It's this block based Daisy like game called Unturned, a survival shooter type thing. And twenty seven million players are playing that. Unreal. The next is Left 4 Dead 2 with 23 million players. Payday 2 with 18 million. Gary's Mod with 18 million. Warframe with 16 million. Counter-Strike Source with 15 million. And get this, Paladins from High res Studios with 14 million players. Fairly new game, by the way. Skyrim, 13 million. Terraria, 13 million. Terraria. Portal 2, 13 million. Civ 5, 12 million. Civilization 5. Grand Theft Auto 5, 12 million. I thought that would be higher. I actually thought Grand Theft Auto would be higher on PC, but it's not. Borderlands 2, 11 million. Robocraft, 10 million. And Rocket League with 10 million, followed by Portal with 9 million. It keeps going, but I'm not going to keep reading. But that top 10 list is kind of surprising um, with the number of players. Very, very surprising. So we won't see this data much. You won't see it much. We won't see this kind of data often because it was leaked again. And this is like precise player counts. And they don't generally do that very often. Um, we usually see concurrence on the Steam stats and like you know, peaks. But they don't show like these precise number of accounts very often for probably for good reason. So check this story out, guys. Over on rstechnica.com. Can you believe it? Can, it's kind of wild that TF2 has 50 million, but also Unturned is sitting there at number five. I'm sorry, number four. Unturned. Amazing. Check it out, guys. Details are over there. And that concludes our episode 125 of Game Chat with Buana. I'm not going to talk like that anymore. I'm sorry. Thank you all for listening to the show. Please follow my stream over at twitch.tv slash Buana. We stream every day except Wednesdays and Sundays. We've been playing a lot of video games on there. Last week, we had a couple of sponsor streams with The Division and with Dauntless. And this week, we've been playing Tomb Raider. 2013 reboot and we finished that yesterday and i plan to play it on thursday of this week but uh i finished it so we gotta find something else to play uh some people were asking me to play rise of the tomb raider which is the sequel because i haven't played that yet either but tomb raider was fun it was actually really fun so check that out that's over on twitch.tv slash one on the vod is up there as well if you want to watch it uh watch the recording of it it is all there also follow me on twitter twitter.com slash one that's my main mouthpiece on social media that's where i announce when i'm going live that's when i talk about various things when i announcements about the schedule uh about new content whether it be videos on my youtube channel at youtube.com slash buona or anything uh related i also have an instagram account instagram.com slash buona uh I'll be posting you know various photos there and you know information about things that require photos will go on my instagram account so follow me over there and we're finally guys the podcast this podcast, Buona.tv slash podcast. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. But, man, we are on Spotify. Just search for Game Chat with Buona. You should see my, my little blue face pop up. And you can listen to your show, your favorite show, this show, Game Chat with Buona, <laughs> on the Spotify. So thank you all for watching. I'm sorry. Thank you all for listening and also for watching my show. We just had our subathon on my Twitch stream, and it didn't go very well. So we're going to be probably pushing for subs and for uh, a bunch of support related things throughout the month to kind of make up for that. Uh, we've got some goal based incentives for like new subs per day and tip goals and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, look for that stuff happening on the channels. All right, guys, that's Game Chat Born episode 125. I hope you enjoyed the show and I will see you all next week, next Wednesday, same time, same station, same burrito. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't going to see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? Um, okay. Bye.